The National Carnival Queen Tyler Teofane declares Chosel Junecoyal Open as the community prepares to showcase its character, craft and culture. A couple from New Orleans helping to keep local folk music alive in the name of Ives Simeon will find out their motivation. The volunteers of Chosel, a group that is growing in number and serving the community, will talk to the head of that organization. What is Jonathan Shalom, the former president of the National Youth Council, up to? We'll find out. And that I saw in the Chosel Fisheries Complex, is there really a plan to deal with it? We will find out from the Member of Parliament. Tonight our focus is on the community of Chosel as it prepares to host Juné Creole 2016. Good evening, welcome to Calabash Community. I am Bernard Fanis. The National Carnival Queen Tyler Teofin, a resident of Chosel, was a surprise act on the night as she was driven as a special guest for the official launch of Creole Heritage Month in Chosel. First of all, talk to us about what it means for you, for Shosel, to be hosting one of, one of the communities hosting Juno Quayle this year. Well, every year they, they take part in the different events, not having it like in their community, but they do go out because they enjoy the celebration. You can, As you can see, they have all the dances, they have mostly all of the craft. They ensure that they do it every single year, although it's not in their community and in Shosel, they still try their very best to be out there and be out in the open with what they can do because they know that they are crafty and they know what they could bring to the table. So they are really enjoying it right now and I am too. <laughs> what does it mean for you to be coming here tonight to be opening this event here? I was not expecting that for sure. No, I wasn't. I got the call sometime during the week and then they told me I would be opening. I'm like, really, I have to do that? And I really feel honored to be doing that. Yes. So what does it feel like coming in and hearing the reaction from the crowd and everything else? For one, I could never stop telling them thank you. From the days before the show, from the preparation to the night of the show, they were always there for me, so I could never stop saying thank you. And I will never get tired of, the, of hearing these things from them. <laughs> this is your opportunity to excite people about coming to show Zell. So as the member of the royal family who is here representing, what can, why should we come to show Zell? Chosel has beautiful views and especially we have the beautiful people, we have the craft, we have our pitons where we get to climb them, especially in Delce. We also have the church where there is the only um, bell that you don't find everywhere in St. Lucia and it's very unique, you find it here in Chosel. And also we have our beaches, which is not very open to everybody because they have their own judgments about it. But it's really beautiful. We have, we, and don't, and not forgetting, we are very friendly people. We always welcome everyone in Sushwazel. And we just have us. Working together, we have us. So that's what, that's all you all need to come into Sushwazel because we're there for you. <laughs> I'm supposed to be excited about hosting it here as well. Yes, I'm very excited. I was very excited when I found out. Because they have been anticipating it, like they were waiting for it for a very long time. And for that to happen for them, that's one of the best experiences you could ever have. Well, we appreciate your time. Thanks a lot and wish you all the best as well. Thank you. <laughs> Prior to the start of the event, we chatted with a few people, among them the Member of Parliament for Chosel, Bradley Felix. Mr. Member of Parliament, it's certainly good to see you here in uh, Chosel. Let me just flash back a little. I'm sure 16 years ago you remember what was happening here in terms of Ginequil when it was last hosted here. Do you have any memories of that uh, Ginequil? Oh, definitely. As a matter of fact, I was a casualty because I actually had to walk from River Dory to the Lafargue field, pack my vehicle, 
So I know many people remember that day and they're looking forward to this Junior Creole because they know Schwozel is a place you know, that gives a lot to the patrons that come. So it's, it's something that to, to look forward to. And as you mentioned that, uh, I'm sure you can give assurances that the traffic management is going to be much, much better this time around. Oh, definitely. I think um, a lot of lessons have been learned. Um, you know, I think what happened was the, the, the traffic control from both ends were not properly managed and parking was not made a priority at the time because people never expected that sort of uh, outcome. You know, but um, lessons have been learned and I'm sure the traffic management plan that's going to be in place will take care of that. As a, as a matter of fact, today you can see that there are certain um, measurements put in place because we are expecting uh, quite a few um, patrons this evening and so we have kept the village clear and people will be parking on the outskirts. I'm sure you were happy to hear the news that Chosen is one of the communities chosen for hosting Junior Creole this year. How thrilled and excited are you about this opportunity? Oh, definitely. Very excited because we all know Chosen has a lot of richness. Um, Creole-wise, you know, Chosen has tremendous value when it comes to our heritage. And uh, undoubtedly, you know, we know that Chosen people are some of the nicest people that you can come across. So. I know the shows that people will put on, people will put on a wonderful show for the people who is going to come in. You know, we have canoe racing. We have a, we, we're known for, as being a, the craft hub of St. Lucia. We're going to have a lot of craft on display and for sale. And I think it's going to be an extremely wonderful day for whoever is going to come here. So, um, you know, I'm sending this message out. If you want to have a good time, come down to the shows, to shows along that day. In fact, it's going to be a, 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 a Junior Creole with a difference because for the week leading up to Junior Creole, various communities will be having their own activity to, 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 to highlight what they produce. So for example, towards La Pointe, that side, the people who do the, the, the craft, they will have a craft village. In the village, we'll have another activity. La Fab will have a, another activity. So there are several activities that are going to mesh and come into the, the, the final day. Um, a lot of people are looking forward to seeing the craft, especially in Chuzel. And um, I was just speaking with some of the members of Catch, the grouping that, uh, that takes care of um, the craft producers in this country, in, in this part of the country. Talk to us about the value still of the craft industry itself to Chuzel. Well, one concern that I have is I don't think the, the way it's managed right now that is going to be sustainable. And so as a, it's ironic that you would ask, uh, um, you know, you'd mention that because only this week I was having a conversation with the Cuban ambassador and we are looking at a sort of an exchange because when we look at what's happening in Cuba, a lot of similar products are being made, but it's commercialized, you know, and it's a very sustainable activity. And we are looking to see how we can exchange ideas, maybe bring up some people from here and then also bring some people from Cuba down here to train our people. Because you look in the cashier's market, lots of things coming from overseas and it has made in St. Lucia, you know. And sometimes it's just a small piece of machinery that's required. And so we are looking to get the craftsmen and women to recognize what is being done on the other side there with a little bit of training, with the right type of equipment and we can explode. You know, because we have a very good product down here. I mean, people come down here just to look for our cool pots, for our mats, you know, for our handbags, you know. We just need to ensure that we make it something that can be sold, and not on a one piece, one piece. Make it sustainable and get more young people interested in it because the young people don't see it as a future. We have to make them see that it is, it can be made, you know, into a viable industry. We were told a while ago when I was speaking to one of the volunteers that Chosel, one of the things, one of the reasons why I should come here is because of the food as well. Yeah, yeah. So, talk to us about the agricultural sector. I'm sure you've looked at it and seeing how it can be taken to the next level in Chosel. Well, one of the problems we have as it relates to the agricultural sector down here is irrigation. Irrigation is an issue because Chosel is known to be a very, very dry area, you know, and there was a, a very good um, uh, project which was started in the Delce area um, with some assistance from a um, uh, friendly government and um, the intention was that that irrigation would reach as far as Balabush okay so that in itself is, will really boost you know what the farmers can produce however in Chosel we're famous for our potatoes our peanuts 
they say it's everything to do for pea. Pineapples, we're known to produce the sweetest pineapples down here, you know, and we need to see what our soil can produce and capitalize on it. But agriculture, uh, uh, you know, is something that we're going to focus on. You know, we're going to uh, uh, um, provide the, the inputs, what is necessary to assist our farmers. And I am sure, you know, as time goes by, people will see the benefit. Still on the theme of agriculture, fishing is one of the things that you're known for as well. Um, we want to delete the positives first <laughs> about the fishing sector and they will get to yeah. this next door to us here. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. You know, um, well, I buy my fish here every Saturday, fresh fish, you know. And, you know, Shuzel is known as a fishing village as well. Um, you know, and, you know, they, some of the challenges that, that, that we have is sometimes, you know, they, the fishermen, they go all the way out there and they come back empty-handed, you know, with the government, um, trying to focus on, on, on increasing the number of fads that are out there. This will definitely help the fishermen. We're trying to encourage fishermen to use the devices that, that, that can help them locate you know, the fishing areas. You know, the unfortunate thing, which I'll go right into, is that when the Shuzel fishermen come back here, you know, they have the challenge of bringing their boats inland. And it is something that has bothered me from day one. And I can assure you that every, every muster of strength that I have is going in to try to ensure that this thing is corrected. You know, we are having quite a bit of conversation. In fact, we've started conversation with the Japanese who were the ones who initially um, helped us with this um, pond. You know, um, the Ministry of Infrastructure is also looking at a, a, a measure that will create some comfort by dredging the pond in a serious way that has not been done for a while. And so we hope that this Act, um, measures that have been put in place will provide some relief for the for the fishermen because in recent times they have suffered some losses, you know, because of of theft, because the the boats are not being held in a secure compound. And so, I mean, I love fishing. Um, my, my my father devoted his entire life his entire life to the fishing industry, and so I try to ensure that the fishermen have a safe environment and you know to help them you know in, in, in reaping the benefits. Chosel is known as the craft capital of St. Lucia. Nowhere else is the industry more active, although of late not much has been happening. We spoke with Jean Cooper, known for producing the best craft mats in St. Lucia. My name is Jean Cooper. I'm from the community of Cafe Chosel. I represent Catch, but I operate at home. I do my craft work at home. We spoke with you a long time ago, yeah. uh, in Chuzel. Um Since then, the how? The that's right. Since then, how are things been going? Um, it's a kind of way ups and down. <laughs> sometimes you get it good. Sometimes we still a long time, about three, four months before getting something. But otherwise, when as the Christmas season coming, I hope I'll get something. So you haven't given up. You still keep doing some of the straw work and so. Same thing as usual. No, we saw, we're getting ready for Chinook, we all, Chuzel is hosting it again, uh, so, um, for many years they haven't hosted it. How excited are you about Chuzel hosting this time around? I'm very excited. I wish and I am hoping that we might have a, something, a little something better. Because now we are going into the dye straw, we are dyeing the straw to make different colours, use different colours with the natural ones. So I hope there will be something for us. So that's some of the new things you've done. Give me an idea of some of the things since we last spoke. Some of the new things you've been doing. I've been doing the fish mats. Any sample I get. So um, I make the drawings and then I do the things I want. The baskets, the fish mats. I've done the pineapple. Many other things. The birds, things like that. So which would, would you say um, are the more popular ones? The fish mat. The fish mat goes very fast. And the square rugs with the square pieces, mm -hmm. we join them together, so it goes very fast. So how have people been responding to the dyes? Some like it, but some like the na natural ones. And you can still get uh, material in the area for you to do your, your straw? Yeah. But the, the dye is very expensive now. You got a little bottle of dye for $20. Before you'd get it for about fifteen, sixteen dollars, but now it's twenty dollars. So we are still using it, but not a, a big quantity of it. We, we use the more more of the natural ones. Now you mentioned catch to me. How active is catch? What's been happening with catch? The members are not 
turning out for meetings. They say they are not getting work. <laughs> they are not getting work, so they don't like coming to meetings. So just a few of us turning out. As you can see, but it's only how many of us are there? I think it's about six of us. Maybe some will, some others will come in later. So are there new people getting into it or is it just basically the same yes, group? Yes, I've got a few because I done a training in January and February and I had 10 young people training and they want to go. In the 10, I got only six that are interested. Mm -hmm. well, that's, that's still good. Now, I know um, there is a plan to bring in some hotels into Shosel area. Um, how hopeful are you that this is going to help? I hope it will help, but I don't know if I'll have time to see that. <laughs> if I'll live to see that, in fact. Because we are always promising, promising, and we, we're not getting the things they promise. Well, we remain hopeful and uh, we would like to wish you all the best for Shinequa. At least that's coming up pretty shortly in October, so we wish you all the best for that as well. Uh, thank you. This is Kalabash Community. We will return to Shuazel shortly. Please stay tuned.